I've had it up to here with these crappy phantom musicals. I just need to get them over and done with so I can get back to watching phantom movies. Oh, yes. I want truly off. Oh, I can't wait to watch movies like The Phantom of the Ritz or Range of Movies. <coughs> oh, well, okay, perhaps I can wait. Perhaps I need to kill as much time as possible. So, just for the sake of completeness, let's have a look at a few final phantom musicals. Now, I haven't seen any of these live, so this will be based entirely on video clips that I've seen. So it will be a 100% ignorant and uninformed review, just the way I like it. First up is the German Das Phantom der Oper. The first thing that irritates me about this musical is how it's totally trying to deceive the unsuspecting customer that this is a touring version of the Andrew Lloyd Webber musical. And I don't just mean by copying the half mask design that almost all the other versions do. I mean, just, well, look at this poster. Remind you of anything? Hmm, should we play Spot the Difference? If I was a German theatergoer and had paid good money to see this, I'd be seriously hacked off. Um die Front in breiter Formation zu besprechen. Im Süden hat der Gegner Zossen genommen und stößt auf Stahnsdorf vor. Der Feind operiert jetzt am nördlichen Stadtrand zwischen Frohnau und... Mit dem Angriff Steiners wird das alles in Ordnung kommen. Steiner konnte nicht genügend Kräfte für einen Angriff massieren. Der Angriff Steiner ist nicht erfolgt. Das war ein Befehl! It's like the same dirty tactics they used on the David Staller DVD by putting Michael Crawford and Sarah Brightman's name on the front cover in the vain hope that people wouldn't read the quote properly and assume it was the Andrew Lloyd Webber version. Everyone's at this. I mean, about a year ago I was in a movie store and the movie 2012 was number one. But not the Roland Emmerich movie, which also sucks, but an obscure low-budget Christian rapture end times left behind style movie. Now surely the only reason this went to number one is because it was packaged and designed in a way that the unsuspecting would assume it's a big blockbuster. Stuff like that really irritates me. It's like, like recently, a documentary on Forks was in the top ten DVD chart. Why? Because the box said, Twilight in Forks. I know people should learn to read the small print before buying stuff, but I think the advertisers have a moral obligation not to resort to dirty underhand tricks and deception to sell their shoddy products. Okay, rant over. Now I've got that off my chest. Back to Das Phantom. Well, I can't speak German, so I can't be much help to you there. Like Ken Hill and David Staller, it seems to use real opera for a lot of the soundtrack, with the occasional bit of rock thrown in. Like a lot of shows nowadays, this play uses rear projection for the backgrounds, rather than bothering with the inconvenience of sets. But it all looks so artificial and flat to me. Bad fake CGI chandelier crash of doom. <laughs> Total Andrew Lloyd Webber ripoff. I shouldn't be so smug. We all know that Andrew Lloyd Webber ripped off that tune as well from Pink Floyd. It's really ripped off, isn't it? So, fair game, I guess. Andrew Lloyd Webber ripped it off, and everyone else rips him off. It's all part of the circle of life. Anyway, back to the review. Okay, even me with my very non-existent German language skills can make out that they're saying, Joseph Bouquet is dead, and then they're going, it is a phantom. been invaded by a phantom. Yeah, so anyway, the phantom appears in Christine's mirror and talks to her through the mirror. Although he doesn't seem to realise he's facing the wrong way. Dollars. Should have gone to Specsavers.
es mir ganz allein, meine Liebe macht dich frei. Was gebe ich drum, wenn ich wüsste, wo du jetzt bist, Vater? Böse Vater? Christine, ich liebe sie. Alibie, Alibie, Baby, Alibie. Now leave me alone. Meine Liebe macht mich frei. Oh, someone's been watching Gerard Butler do his Cape Twirls and Swishes. Swish! 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 <laughs> Looks like Austin Powers in that cravat. Hey look, he's got two noses, just like David Stella has. And they also have really overly big microphones attached to their faces. It's quite off-putting. Um, I feel like I should be saying something here, but I don't know. I don't know about this at all. Christine's costume looks ridiculous. She looks like she's freaking Red Riding Hood. What big teeth you have! All the better to bite your wrist! Oh look, an Apollo's Liar sequence. That's gotta be the wrinkliest most creased looking Apollo's Lyre I've ever seen. So fake. I beg your pardon. No, 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 that's not Red Death. That's Austin Powers. Yeah, if, if I saw a CGI chandelier crash as shocking as that, I would probably faint too. that uses box to cart your refuge. Well, I think that's cool, even if you don't. Eric. Eric, bitte. Oh, kinky. Ich frei mich von den Fesseln. Sie schnüren mein Blut. Sie schmerzen. I don't know what he's saying, but I bet 50 pounds it's... Your female smell. And it's Raoul and the Persian to the rescue, but oh look, they've been put in stocks to be electrocuted by the Phantom. At least I assume that's what's happening, and if it is, that's pretty damn awesome. I approve. I really approve. Nice one, German Eric. Eric. What's this supposed to be? An angry mob? Or the village people? Okay, well that was Das Phantom de Opera. I mean, honestly, I can't tell if it's good or bad from this. I mean, it might be the most kick version ever, but since I can't speak German, I'll never know. If you're German and have seen it, do let me know. But I'm willing to state my reputation on that this probably sucks. <sighs> right, the end is almost in sight. Finally, the most recent Phantom musical we've got is the Skuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskuguruskugu
Now supposedly there was some sort of official video recording of this show, as you can see in the trailer. So I emailed the show's producers and asked them very nicely whether they'd mind sending me a preview copy or even the unedited footage so I could get a better idea of what the show's like and do them a nice review, you know. Just a bit of friendly help for an up-and-coming theatre production, you know, a bit of free advertising, a bit of getting the word out, a bit of online presence, touch of viral advertising, spreading the word, you know, that kind of thing. But did they answer my email? Did they buggery? So, if the show's producers are watching this and are upset that I'm using amateur bootleg footage and oh, this doesn't give an accurate representation of what the show's like, well, you should have sent me a preview copy and then I would have happily done you a lovely review. But as it stands, screw you! We're going to have to make do with the YouTube footage. So apologies for that, but don't blame me. And overacting. I don't know, this kind of acting just really irritates me. I hope they're not all like this. When I was a young boy, I dove into the sea to rescue your scarf. No, you must be mistaken. So, as you can see, yeah, it follows the LaRue story. It seems to use a lot of the dialogue word for word, particularly here. Christine, you must love only me. What the hell's with that tinkling bell all the time? Sounds like a little kitten sneaking up on a bird. Oh, yes. I gave you my soul tonight, and now I am dead. Your soul is a beautiful thing, child. I don't really care for the Phantom's voice. I mean, it should be magnificent, like mine. The angels wept tonight. The angels wept tonight. You know, more like that. Lift your voice and sing to me. Oh, sing and tune, you silly man. Christine's not really much better either. Maybe it's bad acoustics. Oh, the choreography in this scene is ass! The lyrics are really simplistic and childish. I mean, I, mean, I know it's supposed to be a song they sung as children, but, you know, it really sounds like it. supposed to believe that Christine heard this guy's voice and said, Oh, could you teach me to sing? I mean, I don't know if she paid him anything, but demand a damn refund! Oh, she can't hold a tune. And now there we go, now this is a bit more like it. I opened my mouth to scream, but a hand with the stench of death covered my lips and I fainted. He carried me off to a place I've never seen. I awoke to a man in a dark... 
dark cloak and mask and the stench of death everywhere. Do not be afraid, Christine. Uh, that was quick. Hey, idiots, you didn't move anywhere. Couldn't we have had a change of scenery at least? Or any scenery? I mean, I criticized Death's Phantom for having projections, but at least it was something. This is nothing. It's true. But the amateur productions of the actual weather news a more elaborate set than this. Oh, gee. You are in no danger. It's the angel. No danger! Unless you touch the mask. You are the angel of music? A man? You're a man! You're a man! Maybe you're a man! It's true, Christine. I'm not an angel. Or genius. Or ghost. I am Eric. You must never touch the mask again, or a grave deeper than the ocean's floor shall be yours. I felt sure I had fallen into the hands of a madman. <laughs> you think? What gave it away, Christine? Was it the steampunk mask or the insane overacting? We need water to first. over the last year. Oh, can we watch it again? Can we watch it again? Please, 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 please. For it hops, and it hops, and it hops jolly high! And it hops jolly high! Yes. Round of applause. Actually, the guy who plays Eric in this, his real name is actually Eric. It's Eric Fletcher. That's probably a phantom first. Just barely. Do you have the key? No, he's taking it with him. What has he told you? If I turn the scorpion, I have agreed to marry him. If I turn the grasshopper, I will not marry him. Well, turn the grasshopper at once! Ah, don't touch anything! But he talks jelly high! <laughs> show ends with Eric dying of a broken heart. Not bad. Oh, and the Persian even puts his cloak over him. But he doesn't magically disappear because this isn't an Andrew Lloyd Webber production. Oh, I don't know about this one. I mean, some of the photos I've seen and some of the clips, it look pretty cool, and other bits look just terrible. I don't think it's playing anymore. Apparently they are meant to be releasing a DVD. So I guess if that ever comes out, then maybe I'll check it out and do another review of it. I'm never going to escape from Phantom Reviews, am I? I'm going to be 97 years old and still reviewing hologrammatic versions of the freaking Phantom. Oh, kill me now. Ah, well. At least that's over with. I can put Phantom Musicals behind me, safe in the knowledge that I reviewed every single la what? No. No, 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 you don't. What what's this? Phantom of Paris? Now this Phantom Musical sequel. I can't be looking at
did that? It's some sort of Portuguese musical. I think the composer died before he finished it. I think it had a very limited run, so thankfully it's not around, but... I mean, just look at this trailer. This is the worst trailer I have ever seen for anything. I mean, damn! My jaw hangs open at the horrendableness of this. I mean, what the radioactive walrus is am I watching here? The After Effects compositing is horrendous. See, the thing about the moon is, it should be really far off in the outer reaches of space, not hovering sort of on the same sight line as the Eiffel Tower. The year is 1910, and our story begins in Paris, the supreme city of art and love. <laughs> when young Christine Day was a singer at the Paris Opera, Deeply involved in the strange events that led to the death of the mysterious man they called the Phantom. A mysterious man with a mysterious ponytail. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a phantom with a ponytail. And I don't want to. <gasps> the Phantom is no more. Here he lies dead and buried. It's a mask. I guess there! Like no other. Oh, bad green screen. Zoom into Eye of Doom. Raoul de Chagny, in marriage, ah. bore him a son. You bore a son with that thing? You're braver than I thought, Raoul. <laughs> Look at the size of her! Oh, it's the attack of the 50-foot killer Christine! Ugh, map lines! Learn how to remove them! <laughs> Raoul looks like a pig. A pig with a ponytail. What is it with ponytails in this version? <laughs> Yet appear Whoa. floating pirates walking on water. On the conquest of Parisian high society, Raoul still eludes her wiles. But how much longer that night saw the return of Eric? What the holy mother of Kippers was that walk meant to be? Is Eric a kite or something? Most bitter defeat. He is amazed to find that the world he escaped from ten years ago by feigning Oh, death. I'm crying because my neck's been cut off at the bottom. Lies, deception and treachery now rule the life. Treachery? Is that how you pronounce it? Treachery? <laughs> Glowing Eiffel Tower of Doom. Oh, compositing fail. And remorselessly hunted by Inspector Ledoux. What? This pocket of monkey sputum has the Persian in it, or Inspector Ledoux, which was the name of the Persian in the Cheney version. Go figure. Uh, I don't know about this one. I mean, information on this is very, very, very rare. I don't think it's being performed anywhere. I, I don't know anywhere where it has been performed. I don't know if there's any video footage of it. If you have video footage of it, do not send it me. I don't want to review this. This looks awful. But not as awful as some of the things we're going to be looking at in the next few months. <laughs> Good.